The second Sunday of Easter is one that we traditionally hear from the story of, of Thomas. Poor doubting Thomas. And, and if you were here last year, you would have known that I did a rousing defense of Thomas. I love Thomas, one of my very favorite disciples. And I think he gets a totally bum rap with this designation of doubting. Because, after all, he didn't ask for anything that the other disciples hadn't already experienced. He did ask to put his fingers through the holes, although... You know, it doesn't actually say that he did it. It seemed like he was, he did have just what everybody else had and he, he asked for it. And, and, and people have used Thomas as sort of this antithesis of faith, but I don't think that's what it's saying about doubt at all. I don't think there's that much of a problem. Doubt is not the, the enemy of faith. No, when Jesus came to Thomas, and he said there was all this doubting. What Jesus said was, here. If, if that's what you need here, put your fingers here. Put your fingers here. If you need that, here. So I don't think we need to be so against Thomas for asking for what he needed. But I say all that. I preached that last year, so as not to repeat myself too much, to remind you about that for Thomas. But this year, I want us to talk some about the joy of Easter. So here now a reading from Psalm 16. Here now the word. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another good multiply their sorrows. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of they, their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And now a reading from 1 Peter. 1 Peter is not a book we probably very often go to in the Bible, but let's hear now a reading from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You who, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you trust in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, 
the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Joy. I mean, Easter is a joyous time. We celebrate that Christ has overcome turmoil, pain, in fact, death itself, and been resurrected as the first fruits, as the one that lays the path forward for us. So Easter is an easy time to be joyous. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, this has been a bit of a tough Easter to feel joyous. I mean, nothing has felt really the same or what I would have expected it to be. There were no big Easter services with all of us gathered together. There was no sunrise. Well, we had sunrise together on a Zoom meeting, but it just, it, it, it wasn't what I had expected. It, it was different. It feels different. And maybe you don't relate to this. Maybe Easter has been just as joyous for you this year with more time to reflect and connect. And if so, that's fantastic. But if you've been having some trouble connecting to joy, then I want to talk to you about some ways that maybe we can practice joy. Now, one of the great misnomers, I believe, in Christianity is that uh, people have said, well, Buddhism is a practice and, and Christianity is a set of beliefs. I have to say, no, that's not accurate. Christianity is a practice a and it's undergirded by a set of beliefs, but so is Buddhism also undergirded by a set of beliefs and understandings of why you're doing it. Now, granted, I do understand Christianity has a greater focus on that than Buddhism, but still, in its basic form, I believe Christianity is a practice. We practice loving God, ourselves, and our neighbors. We practice forgiving people. You don't get it right the first time. We have to practice. So if you're having a hard time connecting to the joy of Easter, I invite you to practice. And, and here's where I think that maybe we can try practicing. And I invite you to bring a candle. And if you haven't already lit it earlier, I invite you to light it now. And this is a good practice to do for us. A good practice for us to do whether it is uh, during our worship time on Sundays or just a time of Sabbath, whenever you want to start your day of Sabbath, to light a candle. It gives us something physically to do, to connect to. And I invite you in your practice of Sabbath and connecting to ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? Now, maybe you're very connected to your emotions and you don't even need to ask yourself that question. You, you already know where you're at right now. It's, it's not a challenge or, or maybe, you know, if that is the case, you were probably very young or, or maybe you were just raised by, by very emotionally equipped parents. Because I think for many of us, it's a hard place to get to. What am I feeling right now? And, and really, if we're having a hard time getting to joy, we think, okay, well, joy is an easy one to get to. We want to be in that one. But, but if we don't connect to the other parts of our emotions, if there's a separation there for us, then there is a separation between us and the joy as well. Because Jesus invites us into the fullness of life. 
And if we really want to engage in that fullness of life, including the fullness of joy, we have to engage into the fullness of everywhere we are and feeling. So, so I invite you to this practice. So what am I feeling right now? And, and if you don't know, that's okay. So where in my body am I feeling anything tight or anxious or maybe something where there's flow and connection just where am i and you don't have to come up with words you can just feel physically what am i feeling where am i and no answer is wrong no answer is wrong i mean if you're feeling anxious that's kind of part of being in the world right now. It's hard to see mounting death tolls and to know the restrictions of movement and the fact that things aren't the same and not have a certain amount of anxiety going on or fear of the uncertainty. When will things come back to normal? What will the new normal look like? Will I be okay? Will I be able to be with my loved ones when they're going through hard times. Will my parents be okay? There's a lot out there right now. It can lead us to anxiety. And even if you're not going through anything personally, in this time, it's it's just not unheard of that you're just feeling some of that that's in the air. And it could be not that. It might not be anxiety. It it, it might be some other feeling. It might be sadness. Maybe you're really sad about having missed what you expected to have this Easter. Or missing your graduation in person. Or or missing your prom. Or or missing the connections of life that... The, the landmarks, the things you expected. Maybe there was a wedding planned. Maybe, maybe there were events that were just really big and you can't understand how to move on and just accept the fact that they're different. And maybe you're sad. Maybe you're angry. And if you're a good Southern woman of the era of when I came up or earlier, that, that might be a harder one to get in connection to there. Of course, if you're a man of the same era, maybe anger is easier to connect to, and, and the sad or the scared part's harder. But, but either way, whatever it is that you're feeling is good, is real, is God in it, it's fullness. So give yourself some time to be there. If you need to cry, if you need to scream or whatever you need to do, give yourself some time and space to do it. Now, now maybe time and space is really easy for you right now because we're, we're caught at home, we're by ourselves anyway, and that's really easy to do. So, so, so that can be a great easy thing for you to have, but maybe you're trying to juggle working online and, and teaching the kids to do their schoolwork online, or, or maybe you're a healthcare worker and you hardly have any time to think whatsoever. I don't know what situation you're in, but I think it would be better if you gave yourself some time to connect to wherever you are. Even if you can't carve out and, you know, if you, if you are in a house full of people and there's lots of people around, just tell them, I need an hour. This, this, will, this will be better for me. This is my religious practice right now. I will carve out the time for you to have it later too. Um, it, even if you don't, if you can't make that much work, if, you, if you're just getting into the next shift, then, then just take time in the shower. Take time somewhere to not just distract yourself with everything going on and to be wherever you are. Now, maybe you're thinking if, if I started that, you know, things have been building up, especially thinking if you're a healthcare worker and you've been dealing with death and you've been seeing a lot and maybe there's a lot of backlog that, that maybe you're not going to be able to stop crying if you start, but You will. 
And these are the parts we have to walk through to be able to get to the part of joy. It is scary to let loose, but you're not alone in it. You're calling actively God to be a part of this experience. And Jesus is the one that sat with his friends and wept with them. God is the one that hears our cries and cares. Sometimes people get frustrated with their prayers and we're asking for something we want and it seems as though God isn't listening and, and things are not coming the way we would hope them to be. It's not fair. It's more than what any one person should have to deal with and, and sometimes it isn't fair. Sometimes it's more than you should have to deal with. But that doesn't mean God doesn't listen. God is with us in that. And, and if, if you're in a place of doubt about that, that's okay. This is the Sunday for doubters too. I would ask you to be brave like Thomas and ask for what you need. Just ask. I, I don't know if I can believe that you're with me right now, but I am going to try to ask you to, to, to just be with me that maybe I can feel that and that I can connect to that. Ask. And ask after you pass through whatever the place of where your emotions are, ask God to connect you to some joy. Because I think we all need it right now. Need to know that connection, that place of joy, that, that place we can celebrate in. I, I really like the fact in the passage we read that, that it says, it's a very present tense last verse, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith. Not you will. Not just the fact that we can trust the promise that when we die, there is more than this, which is a very real promise. And if you are facing something serious right now and you're not sure you're going to get through it physically with your life, then it is a very real and present promise. But if that doesn't feel very urgent for you right now, the presence of salvation is still there. It's still active. It's a process happening now. It, and it's a process of comfort for us through our anxieties and through our fears, through our angers, through, our, through all of it, through our sadness and through joy. And see, joy is not necessarily the same thing as happiness. Now, m maybe it comes across that way because it's, if you look up in the dictionary, probably be listed as a synonym, but from a biblical perspective, joy has a different connotation. Happiness would be having to do with things going your way and, and things the way you expect it, but joy is a place of contentment that surpasses, that, that, that goes beyond the experiences that you're having. Peace and connection, the knowledge that you are not alone in this, these are the things that bring forth joy. A knowledge of, of your location in the universe with God, a knowledge of the fact you're not alone. And even if things are not what you're wanting, that, that you can still find some place of God and good within it. These are difficult times. These are strange times. These are unsettling times. And, and we as the whole world basically are going through a similar understanding of unsettledness and difference and things being changed. 
And God is with us all in this experience. Take your candle. Look at the flame. Feel it. Feel the warmth. See it flicker. Know that the presence of God is here. I invite you to practice this. To practice it as many times as you need to. As many times as you have time to, depending on what your life is like right now. Because it might take a while to get through some of the fear and sadness and anger. But I promise you the joy is there too. The peace, the connection, the resurrection of Christ in your life right now is here now coming into the world let us pray gracious god we come to you from a variety of places this day we come to you with feelings of struggle and pain. Maybe we come with feelings of, of guilt, disappointment, of anger. Maybe we come to you just tired and in need of rest. Lord, for all those places in our hearts where we are tangled and where we struggle, where we are sorrowful, where we are guilty, Lord, we hold them with great care. We imagine your hands surrounding us, loving us completely, forgiving us for any shortcomings, strengthening us for the journey ahead, holding us in your care. Lord, let your living water bubble up from within us. Let those waters swirl within us, easing our tension, increasing our joy, and calling us to rest within the worth that you have for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen.